Welcome. Welcome, one and all, in here, out there, everybody watching from around the world. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. It is day one. Welcome to The Late Show. It is day one following the 2022 midterm elections, and we are not live. We're not live. In fact, I am barely awake. Bit of a late night and an early morning. Leading up to last night, uh, we all here at the show, we love doing the live shows, you know? Yes. It's, it's like, it, it's, it's a tightrope walk is what it is. We've been looking forward to the show for weeks, uh, working hard, getting excited, making the scripts, of course, building up to the big moment last night. I personally had a lot of anxiety about what was going to have to come out of my mouth <laughs> as jokes <laughs> about the results. Because <laughs> as a performer, there are three things you don't want to follow, animals, children or a fascist takeover of your country. <laughs> it's just not... Cabaret aside. Cabar cabaret aside. But as she turns out, it wasn't as bad as the people who make money off of fear wanted us to fear it would be. <laughs> Case in point, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of coin. Case in point, in Pennsylvania, in one of the most closely watched races of the evening, John Fetterman won his Senate race against <laughs> Dr. Memphis. <laughs> Woo! Come on! In celebration, Fetterman wore his formal hoodie. <laughs> now, uh, the elections just happened. We have no confirmation yet on what his committee assignments may be, but I think it's safe to say Fetterman is a lock for Senate bouncer. <laughs> Dr. Oz, Dr. Oz, uh, losing this one is a huge blow for the far right of Pennsylvania, which, in Oz's case, is New Jersey. <laughs> all the way to the right, all the way to the right. GOP is trying to figure out why Oz lost the race. Fox News' Steve Ducey had a compelling theory. When it comes to the state of Pennsylvania, why did Dr. Oz lose? Well, it looks like, according to uh, the exit polling, it's because Fetterman won. <laughs> Thank you for that brilliant analysis. Now, you might be asking, why is Steve Ducey so dumb? Well, according to scientists, it's because he's not smart. There you go. Much of the... There those are go. the words. He said those words. <clears throat> the uninformed. Much of the blame for this loss is falling on former President Colonel Slanders. <laughs> he endorsed Dr. Oz over a much more establishment candidate, and according to Maggie Haberman, the ex-prez was furious this morning, particularly about Mehmet Oz, and is blaming everyone who advised him to back Oz, including his wife, describing it as not her best decision. <laughs> okay, but it's also not her worst decision. <laughs> to be fair. To be fair. It's lovely. Lovely. Pennsylvania also had a race for governor, and the winner was not far-right Christian nationalist and Lex Luthor, who really let himself go, <laughs> Doug Mastriano. Mastriano got absolutely curb-stomped in his race against Democratic candidate Josh Shapiro, and yet he refuses to concede. Well, that's, that's actually no surprise. Mastriano also hasn't yet conceded the Civil War. <laughs> Losses in Pennsylvania were just one part of a disappointing night for the GOP. On average, uh, in midterm elections, the party, out of power, usually picks up 29 seats in the House. But this year, Republican gains could be as low as single digits. Which, yeah. Yes, yes. Voters gave them a single digit. <laughs> These results is a crisp nut punch to Republican optimism leading up into this election. For instance, before all the ballots were counted, Don Jr. tweeted simply, bloodbath. <laughs> that did not age well. Reminds me of what General Custer tweeted right before Little Bighorn. This is gonna be awesome. Ow, I just got shot in the head. 
So, while the GOP did make modest gains, the massive victory they predicted never materialized. This morning's headline said it best. The vaunted red wave never hit the shore in midterm elections. That's not a red wave. And the red wave was more like a pink splash. <laughs> yes, a pink splash. It was a... It was a, um, it was a salmon drizzle. Uh, 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 a rosy wash. It's like what happens when you accidentally wash your clan robes with your MAGA hat. Just a little pink, a pink wash. Once again, once again. Once again, people are pointing the finger at the former president, including Elisa Farah Griffin, who used to work for him in the White House. This is the time that the Republican Party needs to ask themselves, are they going to continue to nominate poor, can't, poor quality candidates to appease Donald Trump? If you want the Republican Party to thrive, we've got to just finally speak out and say, this man is a loser. Okay, that's not fair. He's also a fascist pervert. <laughs> the Senate... 99 red left balloons. The Senate is, uh, is it still up for grabs? Anything new? Still up for grabs. Uh, and it's going to remain that way for quite a while, uh, thanks to three key races. Arizona, where we still don't have a call on who won the Senate race between Democratic nominee and grown-up Caillou, Mark Kelly, <laughs> and extremist Republican Blake Masters, seen here on karaoke night singing Deutschland über alles. <laughs> the big difference, the big difference between these two is this. Mark Kelly is an astronaut, while Blake Masters is the same, minus the... Tronaut. <laughs> We're also... <laughs> gotta wait. Gotta, gotta wait it out. It's a stroker. That's a stroker. <laughs> We're also waiting for the results from Nevada, where there's a tight race between Democratic incumbent and woman who will win the staring contest. <laughs> Catherine Cortez Masto and Republican challenger and fully erect forehead, Adam Laxaltz. <laughs> We're not going to know the winner anytime soon because Nevada officials are still receiving mail-in ballots, which, by state law, can be counted if they arrive as late as Saturday. But everybody knows time passes quickly in Vegas. I mean, you go to kill 10 minutes at the blackjack table, next thing you know, it's two weeks later, and you're married to a French-Canadian contortionist from Cirque du Soleil. <laughs> but the Senate race everyone's watching is the Georgia throwdown between Republican candidate and pretend sheriff of football town... Herschel Walker, and incumbent Senator Raphael Warnock, seen here... <laughs> seen here being told he's tied with the pretend sheriff of football town, Herschel Walker. <laughs> As of this morning, neither candidate had 50% of the vote, so by Georgia law, the race will go to a runoff. A lucky break for Herschel, because according to many women and children, he's got a lot of experience running off. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guest is Rose MacGyver, and I'll give Bono the Colbert questionnaire. But when we come back, the cast of...